Hi, I'm Daniel with Tormach. This is Jason. We're going to talk through some of the probing routines we used for this IMTS demo that we uh, just took to McCormick Place earlier this month. I think the first thing you see when you're watching this uh, sequence is that we wash the probe off with just a short burst of coolant. We do that, make sure there's no chip stuck to the probe. Yeah, the probe's in the tool changer for the whole process, so just the chips flying through the machine can get them accumulated on the probe. So we just right. add a short little wash cycle to make sure that it's clean. Little safety measure. Next thing that happens is the probe will come down and it uh, touches off on the top surface of both work pieces. And it does that quickly just to make sure that the parts are there. We'll walk you through the G-code used uh, to do that check. It's included with PathPilot. But essentially what we're checking for is to make sure that when the robot dropped the work piece off, it was clamped accurately in the vise. And if it's riding up on the back or the front vice jaw, instead of in between the two vice jaws seated directly in the soft jaws, it'll throw an error and stop the program. And then the robot knows that something's gone wrong and, and asks for help from a human being. Yeah, that routine has programmable tolerances and stuff too. So you can dial and adjust that number as you need. As your stock tolerance changes on thickness, you'll have to adjust that value. But yeah. that routine's built to handle all that stuff. And in fact, the only failures we had with that uh, we didn't really catch the robot dropping the workpiece off wrong, uh, except when we were training the user frames. Um, once we got it set up, we never had a failure. The error that we did run into was uh, the stock being off. I think we gave it like a plus We had or minus, it tight at the start of 5,000 tolerance. Plus on or it. minus 5,000, and we found uh, that some of the aluminum extrusion we were using was a little thicker than that, so it aired out a couple times. We just widened that up. Um, so it probes the back to make sure it's there, it probes the front workpiece, which is the OP2 workpiece, to make sure that it's made it into position. Once we get past that check, we're going to go ahead and probe G54 offsets for the OP1 part, which is just a blank workpiece, right? Correct, and G55 yep. offsets for the front part, which is the OP2, the halfway finished workpiece. In the G54, so when we talk about the raw stock, you chose center to be X, Y, zero in the middle of the part? That's correct. So the op one is 54, it's the center and the top. G55 would be the second operation, and that's the center on the bottom. Yeah. And we go off the bottom, just because it's machine surface on secondary ops, you always want to reference off existing machine data yeah. and surfaces. And this might go without saying, but you're not going to see the probe probing the bottom, right? right. You're just going to see the probe probing X, Y, because what we probed was the soft jaw. The, right. the, the jaw itself. That jaw and, and that vice is an established point, right. so we don't want to be adjusting once, and having our part thickness and tolerances float around on us. Once that number is set, we don't have to probe mm -hmm. it again. However, we do want to probe these for X and Y every time they're flipped, and that's because some of these tolerances are kind of tight. And you notice on the G54 position, you hopefully just have stock that's large enough. Uh, we decided to go off the middle because... It helps balance your load on your saw dimension. So if your saw tolerance floats around, I mean, a saw tolerance is, you know, 32nd of an inch. So what that does is just keeps the cutter load consistent from side to side. So it's just helps with process reliability. It can also help if the parts come in a little bit short and you always leave, you know, 5,000 cleanup, maybe that's not quite enough. So you can reduce your scrap rate and just get better process reliability gotcha. by going out center. So the Y dimension, that's pretty much set by the extrusion, but the yeah. X dimension you're saying is going to be dictated by the saw tolerance and if you go in the middle you're not taking a lot off of one side and a little off of the other side ever right, right? okay it can help save those parts that yeah it can yeah. reduce your scrap rates and then this is so this is when op one finishes we have a workpiece that looks like this we flip it over no i'm sorry we have a workpiece that looks like this and we flip it over and this would be what's presented to op two to probe and you notice that we actually have a fairly large ruby stylus on the probe that ball is pretty big and that allows us to get down below the top hat to probe the actual machine surfaces. So why do we do that? It's again, it's to be able to probe off of a known surface. So these, even with a self-centering vice like these pneumatic vices, they'll repeat within a thou or so. Um, we want a better tolerance than that for this part. So we just probe the existing parts so we can make it as good as possible. It just yeah. really helps bring the tolerances down. And you'll see there are a couple of features here where we actually machine the feature in op one and then we have to chamfer that feature in op two and you can tell that if you didn't have yeah, if you didn't have that on the chamfer would come out looking chamfers bad. chamfers are, are yeah they, they they can hide or show up your air really yeah. quickly they'll, yeah they'll but these chamfers came out spot on so the probing was actually uh very accurate 
So why don't we uh, take a, uh, a wander over to the CAD CAM computer and we'll uh, show you guys how we actually program this stuff and then we can walk you through some of the G code too. So Rogi just talked to you about how you created the probing routine for checking the part. So inside of Fusion, what we did is we just created a manual NC program and we just pasted that right in here. So this is just a manual NC, a straight pass through, and we just pasted in that code longhand. If we look, you can see we have some other code and stuff that we've added into this program to make everything work. So we have an activation command that needs to go between the mill and the robot so that everything, they just communicate properly. So we have this as a pass through. We have a manual NC. I have just a note in there just telling us where the center of the part is and where the offsets are just for user setup. The probe washing routine we added in here. Uh, just again another manual pass through. And then we have the, some codes just to turn the chip conveyor on and the check part probe routine which we talked about already. So then from here we're using the built-in fusion probing routines. So we have the probe for the top of the part. We have the probe Z command. And you can see we just define the feed rates we want to do. We pick the geometry, we pick that top surface. This gives us the ability to define where on the part we want. So for example, we don't want to probe over where our pocket is, or we want to probe around a hole, or if there's a certain feature, we can define exactly where we want that probing routine to work. And then we can tell it what kind of heights and everything we're going to use. The second one is probe the center for the X location. Again, that's the same. We pick the two side surfaces. Uh, one thing to note on this is you can pick your geometry and we have it set to probe the stock. You can also probe the model. So for on first operation, we need to probe the stock. For second operation, we're obviously gonna probe the model. Um, so we pick those routines. We add in an approach distance. I like to keep this number nice and large. It just It's a safety thing. So a little bit of extra probing for 200 thousandths of an inch isn't enough cycle time burden for me risking crashing a probe into the top of the part. Um, and then we have the same settings on the Y. So we're going to jump down to OP2 now and we'll look at those routines specifically. Um, you can see we have a warning here on the X probe. That's because on this one we selected the geometry as the model. So we want to probe those finished faces as we mentioned. Anytime you're flipping to a secondary operation, you always want to reference off your first operation just so you can hold tolerances and you can accurately locate that part. So the warning is telling us is that this probe routine isn't on the edge of the part because this surface isn't actually tall enough. We have construction geometry here so that we know this is going to work. We could also just set this back to the stock block for the op 2 and select these two faces. Since we're working off of center, it's okay in this scenario. It's just going to find center and average it all out. So it would work out. If you were going to probe the edge of a part or just a single reference surface on a part, then you definitely would not want to do that. But for this application, it works both ways. So we'll set that back. And then our Y routine is the same again. We just use the model surfaces and we probe the sides, both sides, and then calculate the center position. All right, let's take a look at the G-code that handles the probing to check to make sure the work pieces are in position. If we take a look at the program here, the very first uh, check we do is in G54. And you can see uh, we've got some variables that we set. First position to probe, that's going to be the value to probe in Z negative. So really, Min allowable position and first position to probe can be the, absolutely the same thing. It's how far down do you want to go before erroring out. And we're saying 25 sal. If we don't find a workpiece within 25 sal of the previous Z0 position, then we're in trouble. And our max allowable position is 30 thou positive. And I mentioned, I think Jason and I were remembering plus or minus 10 thou, but we've obviously opened that up a bit. It's actually plus or minus 55 thou. Still, reliably errors out if the workpiece isn't correctly held in the vise, which is nice. So very first thing we do is we call the probe that turns on the wireless probe, then we wash it off, that's M8 followed by a little two and a half second dwell, followed by M9 to turn the coolant back off. Now we're coming over here, we're setting a couple of uh, uh, values for our feed rates, right? We're moving to the uh, XY position where we previously had zero set, and then we're going to go ahead and call this O probe Z for position. If you want, we could take a quick look at the code behind this. So this is 
in PathPilot here. Um, it's going to be a little harder to understand, but essentially what it's doing is calling G38 probing moves, and it's going to go probe down to see um, whether we find a touch off within that tolerance. That would be that, uh, remember the tolerance that we set here, which is the max allowable position and min allowable position, right? And if we're out of range, it throws an error, stops the program. Thanks so much for watching this video on uh, the probing routines we used at IMTS. We've got another couple videos coming out here, one on the gripper finger design, one on the LiDAR-based grasping. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video or those other ones, hop on our forums. It's forums.tormach.com. Ask away. We'd be really happy to have uh, our customers using some of the things that we've been developing here. Thanks so much for watching.